Hi everyone, this is Garezo here, back from holiday. Today I'm starting a new series of video tutorials. Unlike the workflow videos, here I'll cover some specific techniques step by step. In this first one, I'll go over how to create this food-like loopable lines animation. So, let's begin! In After Effects, let's start by creating our main comp. Let's name it main comp. Uh, let's leave it at 1500 by 1500 pixels. I'm making it square just because this is something I created for Instagram. So 500 frames seems fine for the moment. Hit OK. And now we need to create the pattern that's going to drive the whole animation. We have to make sure it's seamless so we can loop it. And as you can see here, the pattern is kind of moving upwards. So as we're going to rotate the final pattern, we need to know how high the pattern comp needs to be to fill the whole frame. So let's create a solid. Let's make it 4000 pixels by 1500 pixels and make it red, which is fine. Hit OK. So now let's rotate the solid by minus 45 degrees. And now we get those gaps here that we're going to fix by editing the size of the solid pressing Ctrl or Command Shift Y and then we can edit the solid settings. You can just scrub the height here until we kind of cover the gaps here. It doesn't need to be too precise, we just want to avoid unnecessary work later on. So hit OK. Now let's create a pre-comp with this solid by hitting Ctrl or Command Shift C. Let's name it Pattern and make sure leave all attributes in main comp is selected. Then hit OK. Let's go inside the pre-comp and now we can get rid of the solid and let's just move the pattern pre-comp to the pre-comp folder so we can keep organized. All right, so before we start creating the lines, let's turn our grid on and also snap to grid. We just want to make sure our numbers are round so it's easier to work with. Then with the pen tool, click somewhere close to the border and drag it to sit on the leftmost side of the canvas and holding shift press somewhere around here. Now we have to figure out the length of the line. We're going to use this number to define how much the pattern needs to move and some other stuff. As this is not a parametric shape, we need a bit of expression to determine its length. As we need to see the resulting number, I'll create a new text layer here. And we're going to trail down so we can see the source text property. And then holding Alt, you press on the stopwatch here and it opens the expression editor. Now we just need to pick whip the layer here and then type period source rect at time, which is here. And then period width semicolon. And that's it. This number here is the length of this line. Let's just turn the grid off because we don't need it anymore. So if you move this point here, you're going to see that the number is changing. So just because I like round numbers, let's zoom in to 100% and hit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times the arrow key. And then we have a round number, which is easier to work with. So let's write down that number somewhere. And now we can turn that layer off because we're not going to need it anymore. With the pen tool, we can start adding points to the line. So we can edit it. Um, let's do it quickly. Then you can press Alt and hold Shift and pull the handles, the busy handles, to make it smoother. All right, so let's say that's the roughly the shape we want and now we can come down here and add a repeater so to it down once again let's leave the number of copies at three and in transform on the x position let's input our number here which in my case it's 3200 press enter and now you can see the other copies are aligning properly here. The only thing is that we still have like this, this sharp connection here. So to get rid of this, select the line again and select 
the last point hold alt and shift and pull the handle like this way okay and the same thing to the first point here and okay so now it's it's smoother if I move the layer here you can see that we have the beginning of our pattern being formed and before we start adding more detail to this pattern let's test the animation so I'll create a new no object no object and then parent this layer to the no object let's call it master position position then let's open the position set a keyframe here scrape the timeline and here on the X position let's subtract our number again let's do a quick ramp preview seems to be too slow for me so let's make it faster I think it seems about right but as I like things round numbers let's get this down to a hundred frames so now that's basically our loop duration let's press N and trim comps work area and then let's just move this last keyframe just one frame further because we don't want the last keyframe to be exactly the same as the first keyframe so now if we press ramp preview it's looping perfectly okay so let's start adding some detail to our shape here editing the points adding shapes and stuff if you want to change the position of the first and the last point you have to be very careful when selecting them and you have to move them at once otherwise you're gonna break our loop but let's just leave them at the same place for now and come down here and let's duplicate this line let's just name it line one hit control D now we have line two here let's click the arrow here click the path so we select all points so let's drag it down a little bit and holding shift just to make sure it's moving only on the y-axis you can click outside to deselect all the points and then click again on the point you want to edit so let's say one kind of something like this you can still edit the first line if you want to just feel free to do the shape whatever you want it to be and I'll select the pen tool again and draw some circles here and maybe here okay so let's name our groups here let's call these lines and then this shape here blob one and the shape here blob two and as you can see the blobs are not being repeated we just want to make sure the repeater is outside the lines so now it's repeating everything now let's add some colors to the lines so to do this I'll add a gradient stroke so we can get rid of the stroke and the fill here because we're not using them and before we edit the gradient let's just drop our design here so we can use as a reference then back down here let's edit the gradient so we also want the gradient to loop so let's make sure the first color and the last color are the same so let's use the eyedropper here and get this pinkish terracotta and to duplicate this arrow here I'm just gonna move it over here and click again to add a color and then move it all over the other side and now on this color in the center here just want it to be white or maybe not so white and let's hit OK so the gradient stroke is controlled by these two dots here that you can drag to the beginning and the end of the shape so let's hide these extras 
so we can see what's happening and it's looping properly we can kind of still make it a little bit whiter here so it's more evident all right and maybe we can make it thicker so we can see it better cool now we can copy and paste the gradient stroke to the blob one and blob two let's just open it and delete the other stroke and field that we're not going to use and click on the gradient stroke so we can adjust the dots to match our shape and once again for the blob 2 let's delete gradient stroke 1 let's reduce here let's get rid of the extras so we can see how it's looking which is fine by me so now let's create those dots that travel along the lines and to do this let's just close it everything here so we duplicate the lines group now it lines too but let's call it dots and open up the group let's duplicate it again dots two and let's just leave line one line two in dot two and line one in dots because I want them to be different and we're gonna animate one of them so open up the gradient stroke let's increase the width Let's make it, I don't know, 14. Come down here to the dashes section and press the plus sign twice. Let's make the dash just one and go crazy here on the gap. And now change the line cap to round cap. And then we get the dots that we wanted. Let's edit the colors. And now let's get rid of this one here. Let's change the first one to kind of maybe this blue-ish here. fine so let's go over to the other dots group open up gradient stroke one scroll down to the dashes section and now let's press this plus sign six times let's make the first dash one just don't forget to change to round cap let's make the first dash one the second dash maybe 60 dash three one again forgot to change the stroke width let's make it thicker and now play around with the gaps to create the look you want so gap and gap okay let's make maybe 80 all right so let's say that's the look we want and now we want to give it some movement and to do this we're gonna animate the offset property but as you can see here, we are having some issues with the loop because the dots are disappearing and appearing and how we can get rid of this? If the sum of all these numbers plus the stroke width plus 6, which is one for each dash property, adds up to the width of our shape, which is the number we wrote down in the beginning, in my case 3200, then we get a perfect loop. So let's do a little bit of math here using After Effects built-in calculator. So let's get here 3200 divided by 3. And then we get this number here. Let's copy this number to the gap and the other gap. Okay, so we have to account for this 80 here and the 17 and the 6. All right, so let's kind of use this number, minus 80 plus 17 plus 6. Press Enter. Now, if we scrub the values here, you can see that the dot is not disappearing and reappearing anymore. It's just seamless. Now, it's just a matter to keep the relationship between these numbers the same. So if we want to tweak the look, we can kind of, okay, so let's subtract 500 from this one and then I have to add 500 to this one and maybe I want to subtract 600 from this one and 
add another 600 to this one and now if we scrub the values here you can see that the loop is still working let's set this offset down to zero again set a keyframe scrub the timeline to the end and then put our number here 3200 just move the keyframe one frame further so we have a perfect loop and let's just preview so the loop is working fine we have pretty much everything we need now we're just going to duplicate this shape layer here and we can get rid of this reference for now and let's duplicate this layer here and we can position the copy the way we want as long as it to this side here because if I go to the other side we have a gap here so as long as you're moving to this side here you'll be fine and let's duplicate once again and let's just fill the screen I'm not creating too much variation here like you could you could go inside each layer and tweak the shapes to make it to make it look more random but but for the sake of this tutorial I'll just duplicate and fill the whole screen all right so we have our pattern so as you can see it's looping properly nothing is jumping so we have a seamless loop a seamless pattern and so let's go back to our main comp and let's just trim the comp as well to the same duration as our pre-comp trim the control area let's ramp preview it again all right so it's looping properly but it's moving downwards i want it to move upwards so let's change the rotation i want it to be something like this so now it's moving upwards and to finish it up we just need to add a turbulent displace I'm using video copilot's effects console so let's apply it so let's tweak the settings a little bit I wanted to make it turbulent smoother amount let's make it 30 size let's make 180 and again we need to make it loop so we have this handy little option here which is cycle evolution which guarantees that each cycle of evolution is a perfect loop so let's put some keyframes down here click the stopwatch move it to the end of the timeline just put one here just press u to show the keyframes and move the keyframe one frame further so now when we play it back we have this nice fluid like look that we wanted you can keep tweaking the values to your liking but that's the basis of our effect here if you want to make it slower just go inside the pre-comp change the duration and move the keyframes accordingly and you can use the same idea to build all sorts of looping backgrounds just play around with the settings change the shapes make the lines thicker mix colors just have fun all project files for this one and all upcoming step-by-step -step tutorial videos will be available for download for free just go over to my gumroad page and knock yourself out and as always, if you like this channel, please don't forget to like this video, hit the subscribe button and share it with your friends. Thanks for watching and till next time.